to the beautiful Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's time for the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated in association with Saquon Ringside Promotions, Mandalay Bay, eBay Sports, and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the WBC, President Jose Sulaiman Supervisors, Osvaldo Bisbal, and Rex Ross Walker, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the Chairman Skip Avancino, Commissioners Dr. Tony Alamo, John Bailey, Joe W. Brown, and Dr. Flip Homansky, with the Executive Director Mark Ratner. Our physicians at Rigside, Dr. William Berliner, Dr. David Watson, Dr. Todd Chapman, and Dr. James Detling. And our time viewers at the mail also keeping down the knockdowns, James Cavan and Mike Lasella. Introducing to you our judges, scoring this half of Rigside. From Reno, Nevada, Burt Clemens. From Green Tree, Massachusetts, Dick Flaherty. And from Las Vegas, Nevada, Dolby Shirley. Our third man to the ring and working is working in this as 100. 44th World Title Bout, Richard Steele. Right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Lightweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, On my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing navy blue trunks with white trim, representing the well-respected boxing family from Coachella, California. One hundred thirty-four pounds with a record of thirty wins, two losses. He has twenty-two wins coming by way of knockout tonight, ladies and gentlemen. He is challenging for the title. Please welcome the former. Lightweight champion of the world, introducing Julio, the King of And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my right, on the right corner, wearing royal blue trunks with white trim, hailing from Amalia, Sonora, Mexico. Stands at 51 wins, 6 losses, 1 draw with 45 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the two-time and current WBC lightweight champion of the world, introducing Jose Luis El Delito. competitors, both Castillo and Diaz, poised, confident, fearless fighters, Castillo straight ahead pressure guy, the man on the other side of the ring, Diaz, a boxer first, who knows he'd better keep his distance, yet he told us he's not afraid to fight, that he can beat Castillo at his own game, Diaz says he will shock Castillo, who is not taking Diaz lightly, so here we go, big Castillo concern, Cuts, particularly with a Corrales fight dangling in just 60 days. Four of Castillo's six losses stopped on cuts. So we'll see if that becomes a factor. Hall of Fame referee Richard Steele, the third man retired in 2001 to become a promoter 
Castillo. Now he switches to conventional again. He's landing too many left hooks right now. He shouldn't be able to get that punch in this easily this early in the fight. It's a danger sign for, I think, for Julio Diaz. Diaz is susceptible to left hooks. For some reason, oftentimes he doesn't see them coming. And that could be very troubling. If you don't see a punch coming, that's a problem. He's been dropped three times by left hooks in his career. That could turn out to be a huge factor here. Pretty well after Castillo lands some of those hard hooks. Castillo's not been able to get the inside as much as he would want so far, but he's still landing effectively. He's not going to the body much this year either. Castillo is not a torrid starter. He looks to wear people down. We saw that against Massimayor in the last fight. to try and set up more hooks. He's always looking for that punch, Castillo. When we take a look again at how the left hook lands. That was a very nice counter left hook over a right hand by Diaz. So round three scheduled for 12 for the WBC Lightweight Championship and the right to meet WBO titleist Diego Corrales in May. You know, Julio Diaz is a very, very skilled fighter. He is, is the very definition of boxer punch. So if his focus doesn't go south on him during the course of this fight, he can stick to his game plan. He's a very live guy in there against Castillo. But what's troubling so far for him and his people is that Castillo's be able to get those hooks in. Julio you know, with two older brothers who fought for world championships, but came up short. Antonio was in his corner, lost to Shane Mosley for the WBC Waterweight belt in 2000. Brother Joel lost to Philip Holliday for the lightweight title back in 96. Julio's dad works in a construction company that he owns. Uh, runs it for for uh, really a wonderful family in the Southern California area. Coachella just outside Palm Springs. Coach trained by Lee Espinosa. He's got the uh, market corner in Coachella. He's been with Julio Diaz since he was six years old. Good action in this third round. And while Diaz has done some good counter punching as Castillo comes in, I think he would like a little more consistent effort right now. Once again, out. He's in the somebody. navy blue, 30 and 2 with 22 knockouts. Castillo in the royal blue, 51, 6 and 1 with 45 KOs, 5, 2 and 1 in world championship fights. Two-time WBC lightweight champion, former Mexican featherweight champion. Castillo is starting to pick up the beat with his jab and straight right hand also. Right, step back, step back, step back. I think Julio Diaz is missing a bet here. He switches to lefty and he's effective and he stays with it for maybe 15 seconds. Right, step back. He needs to get that 
up to the round and he might have discovered something that would help him in this fight. I wonder if Lee Espinoza or anybody in the corner has also picked up on that Allen get out, punch it, get out. Pass it on. It's just kind of a little stretching right now. There doesn't seem to be a, a rhyme or reason to it. Well, his body, he thinks he's confusing and frustrating. Castillo is... You're right, he's got a little more time, see what happens. Set him up, set him up, oh!
behind you. When I said break, time, time. When I said break, I mean break. Step out there. There's a headbutt. Headbutt. Go to corner. Time. Accidental butt. This guy, accidental butt. This guy referring to Castillo. That's great referee. Very precise, very clear, and lets everybody know exactly what's happening. And of course, if this fight was stopped uh, because of that cut, they would go to the scorecards, though, because he's passed the four-round period. And remember, whoever wins this fight, universally acclaimed as the best lightweight uh, in the world. Of course, Diego Corrales uh, has what? his own thoughts on the matter. He hasn't fought in quite a while since August when he beat Oscillino Freitas. And uh, whoever wins this fight, the winner will emerge to take on Corrales May 7th here on Showtime. Steady pressure from Jose Luis Castillo. Great shots by Castillo right on the head of Diaz. Julio Diaz is counter-punching and is trying to use the jab in the straight right hand, but it hasn't been as effective as he would like. Two out of three in press row have Castillo ahead. Robert De Morales right. says Diaz ahead by a point from the LA Daily News. And I have it 39-37 for Jose Luis Castillo. Here's a jab straight right hand by Diaz. It doesn't land, but Castillo's, or by Diaz, but Castillo's Man, left hook does, and that's oh. kind of this fight in microcosm, that 20 the seconds. Holy. Yeah, Castillo snuck in that left hook at the last second, and it, it caught the kid's attention. Break, break. The kid with two D. Time up home. And one more D for uh, extra credit, extra spunk. You know, they have a common opponent, Javier Hargay. Uh, and interestingly, he, Hargate beat uh, Castillo twice, knocked him out, TKO in the 10th round twice back in 94, 96. And then that's the same man that Julio Diaz beat to win the title, but he did it just last year. So some time, or 2002, I guess, some time went by, certainly, and it wasn't the same uh, horror guy. It was in last year, I'm sorry. Yeah, the win by Diaz over Courtney Burton, very, very impressive win, made him the number one IBF contender and set up the title fight with Javier Haragui, which Diaz won by majority decision, although most thought Diaz won it convincingly. But instead of defending against the mandatory Levander Johnson for less money, he gave up the belt to fight Castillo. And now uh, Diaz right. from Southpaw. Okay. The, the way this fight is going, the, the way it's evolving, isn't favorable to Julio Diaz. He's not doing enough work from the outside, and Castillo's able to get in and do some damage. Nice hook by Diaz from the left-handed stance. Okay. Castillo, who is uh, six, seven years older than uh, Diaz, looks the fresher of the two here. Diaz bloody, getting uh, knocked around. And at the bell, another good poke with the right hand by Castillo. Castillo able to put some punches together in the last round. The straight right and then the jab. That's an odd combination, but it landed for Castillo from another angle, straight right, and then he comes with a half, kind of a half hook, half jab. Castillo with relentless pressure. There's the left hook. Now, it was countered by Diaz, but the left hook from Castillo certainly got there with more impact. Really, Castillo should be able to land on such from outside. Come on, come on. Be alive out there, be alive. Let's go, son. You can do it, come on. Right, right. Round six scheduled for 12 for the WBC Lightweight Championship. The ultra-experienced Jose Luis Castillo wearing the royal blue. Julio Diaz, the kid, just 25 years old in the navy blue. Castillo on the right of your screen, Diaz the left. I know the, uh, the trunks look very similar. 
you know, that, that last 25 seconds is exactly what Diaz would like to see happen through this whole fight. He drew some nice combinations, gave just enough lateral movement so that Castillo couldn't get to him. And in a short burst, that was how he'd like the rest of this fight to go. Diaz uh, working out of the southpaw stance, dodging a left hook bullet a second ago. There's the jab by Castillo. And a low blows. Joining us, no knockdowns, one warning towards Castillo for head buddy. No hold him, don't push. And Richard Steele uh, once again getting involved. Feeling his 144th championship fight. Referee since 1976 involved in a lot of controversial fights. They're still talking about Chavez Taylor. Nice and Ruddick won, you might recall. Controversy there. Now that time, Diaz got the better of the exchange of hooks. And this has been a fairly good round for Julio Diaz. Better, whether he's won it remains to be seen. But you see him land the uppercut. He's been a little sharper with his punches. He's boxed a little bit more against Castillo. This might be a round that some of the judges might be inclined to give him, even with the pressure of Castillo. Getting a little messy now. Castillo gave Diaz a little look no earlier, as if to say, I've got you figured out, kid. We'll see. Diaz much more active in this round, much more active. His punches are a little, a little more uh, accurate. He's throwing combinations, which he did before. He's moving more. Look how I make Castillo miss during that sequence. Pull your hands back. This is uh, probably a very heartening round for Julio Diaz. Right, step back, step back. As we head to the bell, round six. In this world championship fight. Time. Unquestionably. Part of the rich and deep talent. The good thing is they're willing to fight each other. Yep, you're right. And, and that's where the exciting activity is now. 135 and 140. And we're very uh, pleased to be uh, bringing it to you here. Round seven, scheduled for 12. Now, I thought round six was a watershed round for Julio Diaz. Let's see if he can build on it. He got back in the fight. He started doing all the things he needed to do, and he's doing them in this round. Keeping Castillo at bay a little bit with the double jabs and the, the combination. See, Castillo, he's backing him up. Castillo can't punch when he's getting nailed with combinations. Diaz coming on here. Crowd gets behind him. Diaz, though, being lured in there to a hooking match for a moment or two. He doesn't want that. And then Castillo with a whipping right that missed. And a straight right from Diaz. That is an important punch for him to keep landing. Good double left by Diaz. Big left tip, though, by Castillo when he got inside. That could be the telling punch. As we've been broadcasting all night. Break! Step back, step back. Castillo's on, left hook. Now again, Diaz switching to left. Break! Step back. Step back. Don't keep him Restro in scoring. Let's see. All Castillo now. Steve Kim, Robert Morales, and William Trio. I have it 58-56 for Castillo. I thought that last round was an important one for Diaz. And, he, and this no, round, no, a very close round. Diaz boxing well, but Castillo also getting some good work done. Nice job on the cut around the left eye of Diaz. A little trickle of blood from the uh, left nostril now. You're holding, you're holding. The movement in this round by Diaz has been better. Chances. Julio. As the fans get behind Diaz. Big contingent from Southern California here. All his family, his mom, his dad, his brothers, they're all here. A lot of folks from the Coachella area. Coachella population about 20,000. I think about 15,000 of them are boxers. <laughs> this is a very close round to score. And maybe this last 40 seconds will make the difference in who wins it. Keep them up. Keep the punches up. Great, step back. The whole. 
worth again. noting that Castillo hasn't been as active on the inside, Steve, uh, in the last couple of rounds as he would like to be. Break, break, Diaz uh, looking at Richard Steele and complaining a little bit about uh, the head collision by Castillo. Here's Castillo he on the inside. In the hands of and that's not where Diaz wants to he be. Punch on this nope. side. Or get out. Or should Break. be. Step back, step back. Boy, they oh, won't stop the punching. Punch. Castillo could get a point taken away pretty soon. Bad. Uh, Al, bad cut around the right eye of Diaz. Because it's above, I believe, and it's going into the eye. Right on the lid. You're staying in there. You're staying in there. You have to get out. You have to win with the jab. Pull your please. It was a jab. Keep it. Keep it. Just keep swinging that jab. We believe this may be where the cut happened. There's the left hand by Castillo, and shortly after that, the blood started from the right eye of Diaz. We need to note, while the left cut came from a clash of heads, they're saying that the cut over the right eye did not. So if the cut over the right eye stopped this fight, then Diaz would lose. Ironically, it's Castillo who is cut prone. Has had four of his six losses stopped by cuts, excessive bleeding. It's Diaz who's in trouble right now with the blood on both sides. Now he's really blinking that right eye, and it's troubling him. They told Diaz in the corner, of course, you heard him, uh, you've got to stay off the inside, you've got to win with the jab. And he was doing that for the first part of that round very effectively, and then stopped in the second part of the round. Castillo is now using Diaz's eye as target practice. There's a pop, straight right hand by Castillo upstairs. Now the left jab, and it's really scoring. It's effective, and it's really messing up Diaz. Beautiful work here by Castillo. Now Diaz landed a nice counter right, but Castillo walked right through it and landed his own right hand. Castillo brimming with confidence now. He knows he's got Diaz in some difficulty. Well, I think Castillo's laying on the ropes to try and lure Diaz in so he can counter punch him at that point. But Diaz wouldn't bite. Diaz with a good left hook to the neck. It wasn't that clean though, but got it in. Keep him up, Scoring keep point. him up. Castillo is such a veteran, he turns Diaz so he can keep punching when Richard Steele is trying to break them. Blood coming down from the right eye. It's from the eyelid above the eye, so it's getting into the eye of Diaz. Punch again, don't hold. According to Richard Steele, the result of a punch. Castillo trying to uh, corral Diaz into the corner, but Diaz wisely escapes. You know, these are not clear-cut rounds. Good shots there inside by Castillo. But I think the steady pressure of Castillo and the fact that he's the one Hunt coming forward at all times is going to certainly impact how these judges feel about every one of these rounds. Diaz showing his toughness here. Fans chanting for Castillo now. Being pulled down by the Diaz fans. Less than 30 seconds in the eighth round, a dramatic one here. Both men doing some good body work there, especially Diaz. But this is a round that I think Castillo took control of in the last minute and a half. Boy, look at the swelling around Diaz's left arm. And again, now that came from the clash of heads. That is really becoming ugly. And that's still hitting after the break. After Richard Steele. Last warning. This is last warning. All right, now he's going to start taking points. Good job by Richard Steele. They're going to stop the fight. They're going to stop the fight. Yeah, Richard, stop the fight. Yeah, look at his eye. Hey. Go put your head in there. Get out. Get out. Don't get your head. That's why he's hitting you with your head. Hit him back. Don't stand there. Hit him back with the head.
in round seven, these fighters both working effectively on the inside. Castillo especially, and a lot of the head slamming inside, and you see the grimace uh, on the face of Diaz, and that was, again, hurting that. That's where I think that, that swelling around the left side got even worse. Diaz, who never sat in the corner there between rounds, the Dr. David Watson taking a close look. So Diaz in a very tenuous position right now with the swelling of the cuts. And you know, Jose Luis Castillo has pushed the envelope here today. Let's be honest. There have been a bunch of heads banging together. He's hit after the break a lot. And, and Richard Shields getting ready to take a point away for that. But he's also doing a lot of effective things in terms of boxing. Alan, by your account, is this close enough to where if a right, point were right. taken away from Castillo, it could become a huge factor? Well, I've got it 78-75, so with a few rounds left, I think a point could pull still pull uh, put Julio Diaz back into this fight under the right circumstances, but because uh, we know how the judges are looking at it. There's been a steady pressure of Castillo, and he's kind of pushed this fight in his favor. Kirk Clements, Dick Clarity, Dalby Shirley are the judges. Reno, Massachusetts, and Las Vegas. Break. You know, one of the issues is, well, I do think Julio Diaz has fought a very good group of fighters. There's the, the scoring, uh, agreeing with me that at the press row scoring, agreeing with me, I have it 78-75 as one of the uh, people at press row scoring Break. did. One of the issues here is, Julio Diaz has fought very good fighters. He hasn't fought cream puffs, but nobody has fought the roster that Jose Luis Castillo has fought. Stevie Johnson, Cesar Bazan, Mayweather, horror guy, Paul Joel Casamayo, Juan Lascano, all champions and all terrific fighters. Now, one of Castillo's more bizarre scenarios is rematch with Stevie Johnson. He retained the title with a majority draw. The result initially announced as a split decision win for Johnston. Yeah. But uh, an error in the tabulation was found. Johnson returned the belt to Castillo in his dressing room, ending one of the shortest reigns in boxing history. The pressure of Castillo now really, really is getting to Diaz. And the swelling around the eyes bothering him. And now Diaz, Castillo working better on the inside. See that head pushing forward. And should, Break. you made a very good point. Let's say Julio Diaz finds some way to win this match. In May, he's supposed to fight Diego Corral as if he would win. Those cuts could, could impact that fight if hand, he found a way hand. to win this. Yeah, is that enough recovery time? Two months, uh, particularly against, uh, you know, a, a skilled guy and a hard puncher like Corrales. Punch get out. Right now, of course, it doesn't look too good for Julio Diaz, and especially the way things are going in this ninth round. And Castillo, who, who told us... Yesterday, he, he wanted to, to end this thing early. This is a good left by Castillo just before the bell and come away clean. Well, it's not early, but he may come away clean. Help me, help me here. The insulin. The insulin. He took his time. He's taking his time. He's using his head. You have to. You have to. When he puts your head in there, you have to push him back. I can't see. Everything. The cuts are fine. The cuts are fine. Come on. You have to be stronger. Stay strong. Espinoza, Willie Silva, the cut man in the corner of Julio Diaz, doing all they can do to, to hold him together. Round 10 scheduled for 12. Don't hold him! Richard Steele with a caution to Castillo. Stop holding. Over the top right hand by Castillo. Now Diaz on his horse. You know, Diego Corrales is, uh, with his trainer Joe Goosen, watching this fight right now, and I, I think I know what they're thinking. 
Corrales was able to box very, very effectively against Casamaro in uh, their second fight. Right! Stay in long range, use the jab, still land power punches. They are thinking right now, no way does he want to stay on the inside with Jose Luis Castillo. He's a power puncher, Corrales, but he doesn't want to languish on the inside with Castillo. Bad things happen when you do that. Well, if Castillo does uh, emerge victorious here tonight, boy, a heavy right hand for the head of Diaz. I can't wait for May 7. That could be a foul. Oh, big hook. Big left, and down goes Diaz. First knockdown of the night. Come to me, come to me, come to me. Come on. You okay? Boy, that's a game warrior, Julio Diaz. He's been down a few times before in his career. With a minute 20 to go, he's got to survive. His left eye is almost shut. That's the fourth time in his career he's been knocked down by a left hook. But he's got to go to war now, and he's doing it. Brian Richard Steele watching ever so closely, and he's fighting back as Diaz. He's showing what he's got. Big heart. But Castillo no continues to have his way. But back comes Diaz. And he goes down for the second time. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's over. Steele says no more. There was no free knockout rule just for your own information. But it's a moot point. As Diaz goes down for the second time, he was really in all kinds of trouble. Richard Steele said, I don't want to see you get punished anymore. It's academic. Jose Luis Castillo, yes. His fans out in full force. The wait is over for Castillo. Two times since December, he's had fights with Diego Corrales put off. Now he's got him. For sure. And the loser. Battered eyes. No cuts on Jose Luis Castillo. He did come away clean. Jose Luis Castillo could never be discounted in a fight. This fight was a perfect example. Maybe a little bit of a slow start, but once he picked up the beat, uh, he was very, very effective against Julio Diaz. And now, by virtue of tonight's win over Diaz, the 31-year-old Mexican veteran will meet the hard-punching Corrales. May 7th, right in this Las Vegas arena. His second, second successful defense of the, the belt in his second reign. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Con consider this for a moment. This man has fought Juan Moscato, Joel Casamayo, and now Julio Diaz, and will fight Diego Corrales. Could you fight four tougher fights right now? Well, I'll tell you one thing about uh, Diaz. He put it all out there. Relinquished his IBF belt to get this fight, but it was not to be. And that, that makes this very disappointing for this young man. He's still 25. He's still a very good fighter. There are things ahead for him. But clearly, this is just a monumental disappointment. Of course, the bad swelling. Now, that swelling was caused by a clash of heads. But no matter, enough other real punches landed that created plenty of damage. And as Castillo celebrates, Diaz demonstrates what is good about a much maligned sport. A throwback to the days when you went for the biggest fights, no matter what the odds. This is the first time Diaz would go down. It was a left hook. Beautifully delivered by Castillo, the fourth time in his career that Diaz had been knocked down by a left hook. And uh, you see the disappointment clearly uh, and frustration by Diaz. Castillo is able to get, he has a sneaky fast left hook. It looks for all the world like it's a little too wide, maybe he's plotting coming in. But he lands that punch, and he lands it against fighters like Diaz, who are clever, good boxers. And we look from this angle, you'll see how, even in slow motion, of course, how quickly the left gets there. Well, he, he gets it in, and uh, and Diaz goes down from. Diaz should really be commended for uh, for doing what he did, giving up the belt going for this kind of a fight. Castillo should also be commended for fighting whoever they put in front of him. 
without uttering a peep or a complaint to take this long and circuitous route to Corrales. Knockdown number two came first from an uppercut and then a left hook, but the uppercut had done the real damage. And I think a big part of Richard Steele stopping this fight had to do with the cut over the right eye, the swelling of the left eye, which left Diaz with virtually no vision, I think, in that eye. And, yeah, and, he, and here's what Richard Steele did in this fight that he was criticized for not doing in the Ruddick Tyson fight many years ago. He looked very, very carefully at this fighter, took his time, and made the decision. And uh, Richard Steele, who this he, bout, did a superb job of yeah. referring. Yeah, there's no complaints, no booing. Let's get the uh, official uh, time from Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes 23 seconds in round number 10. A referee in charge, Richard Steele, stops the contest. He's the winner by way of technical knockout. And still, the WBC lightweight champion of the world, Jose Luis El Temible. So Castillo goes to 52-6-1, 46 knockouts.